All right, welcome to episode one of the brand split from day one. It is Monday Night Raw time. Ignore that logo. We haven't switched to it yet. I switched a week early, and now I've decided I'm going to wait till after Battleground before I switch to the new Raw and SmackDown logos. Today is night one of the draft, and I'm fucking excited. I have night one all planned out for this episode. We've got announcements for the Cruiserweight Classic are made for this episode. We've got Baron Corbin versus The Miz for the IC title. Shit is going down tonight, boys. And before we get into the show, I do have to say, my nose was stuffy all day today. So I chugged a little bit of hot sauce to clear up my sinuses. It's working well, but I might be sniffling a little bit, so sorry if that's annoying. Right fucking there, (laughs) subconscious. So let's just get right into the show. So yes, in the database, Terry Funk did pass away, surprisingly. I didn't think the man could die, and... We just, we're going into the show. On the screen right now should be the draft rules. I'm going to read them out to you anyway, even though they're right there. Number one, the first pick is awarded via a coin flip. If Raw picks heads and it lands on heads, then it's Raw. SmackDown picks heads, it lands on heads, whatever. It goes to SmackDown. But that means whoever gets the first pick tonight will get the second pick on Tuesday on SmackDown, as in, so if Raw gets the first pick tonight, then SmackDown will get the first pick on SmackDown. Um, Each round is six picks long, so then we'll have six picks, three for each show, buffer, you know, fill in, it's not filler, but it's the rest of the show. Then another round, and we'll keep going. Each night is five rounds long. So, a total of 30 people are drafted in each show. 60 total, well, not people, you know, picks, which includes teams. Teams are selected with one pick. Here is a list of all the tag teams on the screen. They can't create new ones. These are the only teams that they can select. There's only one trio, I believe. I believe the New Day are the only trio that can be selected. In the real draft, I believe it was six NXT people could be selected. In our draft, it is eight, but it's eight picks. It's not eight people, it's eight picks. So teams are one pick. Even in NXT, teams are one pick. And anybody that goes undrafted will be a free agent. So Stephanie, Shane, and Daniel Bryan all come out. Vince has the coin. Steph and Shane pick heads. And it's heads. It's uh, it's a double-sided coin. The fans don't know that, though. We rigged it, so Raw will get the first pick. And with the first pick in the second brand split, the Monday Night Raw crew select Seth Rollins. Pretty standard. That's what you'd assume when Stephanie is running their show. Shane probably wanted to pick the next person that's going to be picked. And that person is Dean Ambrose. Goes to SmackDown. Shane probably wanted that guy, but Steph might have overruled him. I don't know how they're working this out. So Dean Ambrose is going to SmackDown. With Raw's second pick, they select Randy Orton. And they do make note that Randy Orton is still injured, but he will be back for Battleground. And yeah, that's all they really note. SmackDown Live's second pick is John Cena. That's right. Big match John. The biggest guy in the company in terms of TEW. What the game thinks. John Cena is going to SmackDown for the first time since like 05, I think. He will be an exclusive member of SmackDown. Raw's final pick in the first round goes to and you gotta believe this is Shane's pick because it is Roman Reigns. There's, we're still in this mindset where we're pretending that Roman is loved by the fans. And he will be back for the pay-per-view, I hope. I actually, I looked at it. It says he's out for seven days. That might include the fucking pay-per-view. So I don't know what I'm gonna do if Roman is not here for Battleground. And with the final pick 
in the first round, SmackDown Live selects from NXT, Finn Balor. Finn Balor, first round pick. First round pick in the whole draft. Everyone in the company, Finn Balor, he's getting over. Now, when I did the prologue episode, I didn't really talk about what happened in the Dean Ambrose Seth Rollins feud, but essentially, let me give you a quick, quick, you know, rundown. What happened was Dean Ambrose accuses Seth. Sheamus comes out. He's like, I'm tired of you two hogging all the spotlight fella. And then Sheamus gets beat and then Sheamus goes away. So then Big Show comes out on behalf of Stephanie McMahon to take out Dean Ambrose. Seth Rollins does not like the Big Show, but Stephanie's like, come on, we're working together still. So it led to a tag team match between Big Show and Seth and Dean Ambrose and Cesaro. Can't remember exactly how he got into this, but Dean Ambrose and Cesaro really hit it off. They're good pals at this moment. So once the round concludes, Seth Rollins comes out. He's like, I'm the fucking greatest in the world. Number one pick, baby. Dean Ambrose comes out. He's like, you might be the number one pick, but I'm still the fucking champion. And Cesaro comes out and he challenges Seth Rollins for later tonight. He's like, if you're really the best, prove it by beating the better. I, that was a terrible line, but whatever. Whatever, our opening contest. Surprisingly a 70, since it was b- both between two heels and Baron Corbin is not good yet. Baron Corbin loses to The Miz after The Miz uses underhanded tactics Miz tried to get out of this match so much, and he kind of even did during the match at the end if he used underhanded tactics. What kind of man is the Miz, and where does this feud go from here? Following that is the Cruiserweight Classic announcements. So if this, I've told, I've said multiple times that if you either didn't watch the prologue and you skipped episode zero or something happened and you haven't heard this announcement, I am doing the Cruiserweight Classic And the way I will be announcing the people in it will be on each show, all all seven, or no, it's five, all five shows, two Raws, two Smackdowns, and Battleground will be announcements for who is in it. And the first people announced are going to be NXT names. Not NXT names, sorry, NXT names. There's four people from NXT and then a handful of guys that were in the original Cruiserweight Classic. So I'm going to be announcing those people first. First person announced, we have Andrade Cien Almas. He is going to be in here. Renee Young, by the way, she is the one commentating over this short little segment. Rich Swan is in the Cruiserweight Classic. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, both in the Cruiserweight Classic. The Brian Kendrick has made it into the Cruiserweight Classic. Akira Tozawa, once again, will be in the Cruiserweight Classic. And a surprise to many people watching at home in this universe that don't know about the real-life Cruiserweight Classic, the final man announced on this Monday Night Raw is Zack Sabre Jr. So those are the first seven people that we have announced for this Cruiserweight Classic. Here are all the gimmick changes. Akira Tozawa has a no gimmick needed. Um, all right. Ryan Kendrick, no pros and cons, so I guess that's good. And then, ooh, fan favorite gives a small boost to Zack Sabre Jr.'s charisma. We are going to be looking through all those gimmick changes when they come up. It is now time for round two of the draft. Steph, Shane, and Daniel Bryan all come out. Raw has the first pick in this round again. They will have the first pick in each round for this show, and then SmackDown gets it for the second show. As I said earlier, I don't know if I made that clear that it's not Serpentine. All right. First pick of round two, Steph and Shane select Bray Wyatt, the surprising face that I did not know was a face. SmackDown counters that by selecting AJ Styles. So the AJ Styles John Cena feud will continue and it will be continuing on SmackDown Live. Raw selects, and you gotta believe this is to break up that little partnership that was created just a few weeks ago. Raw selects Cesaro. 
So there, this might be a plan by Steph to break up any, just to piss, I guess, piss off Shane. I don't, not to piss, to piss off SmackDown. I don't know. She's petty, I guess. SmackDown Live then selects the United States champion, Rusev. Rusev going to SmackDown. Raw selects Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, a very high draft pick in this in this draft. And the final pick of this round. And the first female selection made by SmackDown, the women's champion, Charlotte Flair. During this segment, it is also announced that John Cena will have his first match back in a while. I'm going to be real with you guys. My memory's kind of fuzzy this year. I remember really enjoying shit after the draft. I remember stuff after the draft vividly. But before the draft, this all kind of blurs together. So if John Cena wasn't, like, an occasional wrestler at this time, like, he wasn't on and off, then this won't make any sense. But let's just say he was, and this will be his first match back, and it will be against a young guy named Tyler Breeze. But before that, that's later on in the show. We have the Cologne Cousins taking on the New Day. It's just kind of, uh, it, it, you, you'd think it's just a filler match, but believe it or not, New Day come out without Xavier Woods. They are, of course, still mad at Xavier Woods after, you know, getting their asses kicked and Xavier Woods being useless. They don't really understand the situation. Okay, apparently he was there. Ignore that. I, I guess... He must be selected as a manager, so I'm sorry. Just ignore that. He's not at ringside. They come out without him. As we know, Xavier Woods is, like, afraid of Bray Wyatt, and he couldn't help his bros when they were getting beat down, and they just opted to not come out with him, and they still get the victory, which is kind of, ooh, kind of weird. And we are backstage. Stephanie McMahon calls Seth Rollins into her office, and she's like, don't take this the wrong way, Seth. But I feel you could use some backup for your match against Cesaro. So I'm going to have Big Show come out with you. Seth immediately flips out. He's like, I don't want that fucking loser near me, okay? I don't need him. He's He was the worst part of the authority. He never helped me. He's not useful to me. And Steph's like, this is non-negotiable, Seth. We work together. You work with the Big Show. And then we cut to commercial, and when we come back, it's time for the draft again. Round three kicks off. Stephanie McMahon selects the big show. (laughs) To Seth Rollins' dismay, I don't believe Daniel Bryan wanted the big show, so they were going to get him regardless. But SmackDown picks Sami Zayn. And the commentators note that this Sunday will be the final time Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens will be fighting, at least for the foreseeable future. It will be a while before they come cross paths again, so this might very, this very well could be the final chapter of the Sami Zayn-Kevin Owens saga. Raw's third pick this round was Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho, of course, furious at Daniel Bryan, so I do not believe that Daniel Bryan would want to pick him up. SmackDown then selects another female in Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks is going to SmackDown. Raw then selects the tag team champions, The New Day. New Day are then countered by another tag team. Kind of some veterans, loved veterans of the business. Bubba Ray and Devon, The Dudley Boys. After this draft segment, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens both come out. They have microphones. They kind of exchange words back and forth. And it's harsh words, of course. And then eventually, Sami gets to say, Kevin, this is going to be the last time I get to see your fat ass face for a while. And I'm really happy that I get to kick it one last time. Kevin Owens and then Sami Zayn begin to brawl. And they're pulled apart as we... Go back to commercial. And when we come back, we are greeted with Charlotte Flair and Dana Brooke fighting Natalia and Becky Lynch. Dana Brooke and Charlotte Flair did defeat them. Charlotte Flair submitted Becky Lynch with the figure eight. And Charlotte was head and shoulders above everybody else. Dana Brooke was the weak link. And I am not surprised. 
Sorry. After that match, oh, Becky Lynch was angry. Dana, oh my fucking God. Dana almost injured someone already. <laughs> Becky and Natalia then get into a scuffle following that match. They're both kind of pissed at the other one for not being able to beat the women's champion and putting their names on the map. A little scuffle, a little scuffle. We then are greeted to our next draft segment, draft segment number four, which means this is round four, and leading round four, Raw, Monday Night Raw selects the Intercontinental Champion, The Miz. The Miz. Miz is picked up by Monday Night Raw, so we aren't going to have to worry about all the titles being on SmackDown or some bullshit like that, because of course we wouldn't, because it's scripted. We then have Dana Brooke picked up by Friday Night SmackDown. Dana Brooke, of course, still has the power to challenge Charlotte Flair for the Women's Championship. No comments have been made on that, sh- on that for this show all night, which is kind of surprising. Enzo and Cass are the next selection for Monday Night Raw. Daniel Bryan sees this and once again counters with the tag team, but he counters with the rest of the club. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Realizing that we are four rounds in, Raw has, I mean, SmackDown has three women and Raw has zero. Stephanie panics and selects Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella is going to Monday Night Raw. And to end the round, SmackDown Live Select, a little project I have hoping for the future of my series, Dolph Ziggler. Now, what do I mean by project? I mean, Dolph Ziggler, as we know, his career just, you know, after the first few months of this brand split, just went into this huge downward spiral, and he really hasn't recovered. The character of Dolph Ziggler is kind of dead in the water right now, and my project, my goal, one of my goals for this series is to save the Dolph Ziggler character. All right, so yeah, that's one of my goals for this series, is to save the character of Dolph Ziggler. If you heard some barking during my speech there, that is my dog Pyro. Everybody say hi. Thank you. All right, following that, we have a backstage segment. Charlotte Flair and Dana Brooke are walking from gorilla position. I think that's what they call it, gorilla position. Or was that TNA? Might have been, eh. Probably both, actually. Bruce Pritchard was there. Doesn't matter. They're both walking back. They're, Charlotte's like, yeah, good win there, Dana. Dana's like, oh, thanks. You know, you're, you're one of the greatest. And then Charlotte starts slowing down. And she's like, you know, Dana, I, I've noticed you you still have that women's championship opportunity you could, you know, follow up on. And Dana's like, yeah, I've been thinking. What if we had a match for it? And then Charlotte stops in her track and says, Dana, my father Rick has met many shady men throughout his career. Now, if you cash in that title shot, there's no stopping him from sending one of those shady men. And I don't, I don't know what they'd do to you, Dana. I think it'd be in your best interest to just give up that title shot. Charlotte walks forward and then Dana doesn't move. We then, of course, have our match promised earlier. Tyler Breeze and John Cena... Now, the story of this match is that John Cena is still great, but he might be slowing down. This is the longest match of the card so far, and it's against Tyler Breeze, so many are questioning whether John Cena still has it, or is he just a movie guy for life? Now, after that, John Cena is celebrating when AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows come up on the Titan Tron, and they're like, Cena, Cena, Cena. Always keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And you didn't either. You didn't keep us close and you left your friends backstage. And, well, we've had our way with them, if you know what I mean. And AJ Styles points like the camera he stole down to Enzo and Cass. And they're beat to fuck. And John Cena is furious. He's like, how how dare you, AJ? How dare you beat out my... That's it. I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm making a match. I'm challenging you, you and your two stupid bald goons, your fucking dildo buddies, Kevin Anderson and Luke Gallas, Gallas, whatever. 
Those two against me and my pals Enzo and Cass, and AJ immediately accepts this is what he's wanted. He's wanted John Cena. Dude, I just came up with some of the best John Cena insults you'll ever hear. You're two bald buddies. Following that is the main event of the evening, and of course in a match that does incredible because it is Cesaro and Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins defeats Cesaro, but here's the thing, here's the thing. Five minutes into the match, Seth Rollins is already upset with the Big Show, and Dean Ambrose is at Cesaro's side. So what Seth Rollins does is he finds a way to get both the Big Show and Dean Ambrose ejected. He fakes interference from Dean Ambrose to Cesaro, and then he stages interference from Big Show to himself, and the ref just thinks that the managers are interfering, so he ejects both of them. Seth Rollins gets exactly what he wants, and in a very, very competitive match, from that point on, Seth Rollins defeats Cesaro, and Seth Rollins helps Cesaro up, but still walks away. We then, of course, are led to the final round for Monday Night Raw, and Raw's first pick for round five is Ryback. <laughs> Ryback! Yay! Isn't everyone loving that pick? I know I am, but I'm loving this next pick even more as SmackDown selects Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch, a very good wrestler in my opinion. Really love her in-ring work. Monday Night Raw counters that with an incredible talent known as Sheamus. Monday Night Raw not really reading the fans too well. SmackDown Live selects the Usos. Now, I do have something to say. I found that Usos picture, the one that's used for the draft, but I could not find pictures of them individually from this time period with the face paint. If I can't find pictures ever, then we're going to just have to stick with the Uso Penitentiary Usos, but if you guys know where there's any images, that'd be great because I can't find any. Raw's final pick of Monday Night Raw, of round, or I guess night one, I should say, they select Neville. Now, that's a surprise. Raw doesn't really select up-and-comers, and Neville is a huge prospect, and I hope Raw can capitalize on them. But Daniel Bryan does this little, small little speech before, um, before his pick is announced, and he's like, Shane, I'm not here to play games I'm here to blow the fans away. And with my final pick of night one, I select from NXT Shinsuke Nakamura. And we close Raw with Shinsuke coming out, doing his entrance. The fans are eating it up. They're singing to the fucking Nakamura song. They're going fucking crazy for Nakamura as we end Monday Night Raw. 84 for that segment, 90 for Monday Night Raw. Pretty good. Pretty good, I'd say. Um, Yeah, that is night one of the draft. Night two of the draft will finish on SmackDown. I don't know if I ever posted the who's eligible in the draft somewhere. I might have. Hopefully I did. If I did, then just anyone that wasn't selected eligible for night two. I hope to see you guys there for night two of the draft.